this bundle is absolutely a steal. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator, welcome back to yet another bundle banter. A little bit late, this bundle's been out for four days already, but you know I still gotta do it. Humble Bundle is back with quite an expansive bundle, this is the Asmodi Digital Play with Friends Bundle. Wow, it has a lot of content in here. Most of it is DLC, so I won't go through the tiers exactly as they are. Um, basically, I'll talk about the game and its DLC in the in the same stretch. So, take a good note of the tiers. In the $1 tier, we've got Small World 2, Carasone, Carasone, Caca, Carcassone. What the fuck? Google help me out. It said it's Carcassone, Tiles and Tactics, uh, <laughs> Patchwork. We've got Kings and Assassins, Love Letter, and Potion Explosion, all for one dollar. Not too bad. Beat the average tier, we've got Splendor, Splendor the Cities, Splendor the Trading Posts, Mysterium, a Psychic Clue Game, Carcassonne, Winter and Gingerbread Man, Carcassonne, Traders and Builders, Small World 2 Cursed, Small World 2 Be Not Afraid, and Twilight Struggle. Middle tier looking really nice. Actually, so's the top tier for that matter. It's got Scythe Digital Edition, Lord of the Rings Adventure Card Game Definitive Edition, Mysterium Hidden Signs DLC, Carcassonne The River, Carcassonne Inns and Cathedrals, Carcassonne The Princess and Dragon Expansion, Mysterium Secrets and Lies, Small World 2 Grand Dames, and Splendor The Strongholds. My goodness, it is, it is so much. So we're going to dive into it. We gotta be brave. I don't know how long this video is gonna be. I'll try and do it as briefly as possible. So let's open things up with Small World 2. This is probably one of my favorite games in the entire bundle. It is a game of territory accumulation, similar to Risk, but it's played in a fantasy setting. It also does away with the extreme luck-based dice rolls of Risk, which is a net positive in my book. You'll control different factions that all have various attributes and an additional special ability like flying or berserking. It sounds super amazing and... It is, when you can get it to work. Online connectivity and crashing is a constant issue. Is it worth the struggle to try and get a game started? I'd say it is, but the final call is up to you. Small World 2 Cursed DLC adds gremlins and kobolds into the mix, along with five new special abilities, including cursed, hordes, marauding, ransacking, and were creatures. It adds some new layers to the game without breaking what was already in place, Overall, not a terrible little expansion, and it has a relatively little price tag to match, whether it's in this bundle or out of it. Not a bad deal at all. Small World 2, Be Not Afraid, my favorite DLC for it. Five new races and five new powers added into the mix. For races, it adds Barbarians, Homunculi, Pixies, Pygmies, and Leprechauns. The new abilities include Barricade, Catapult, Corrupt, Imperial, and Mercenary. This is definitely a strong contender for the best expansion of Small World 2. Plenty of tricksy races to mix things up. More variety is never a bad thing in a game like this. Small World 2 Grand Dames, probably the weakest in my opinion. This expansion adds gypsies, priestesses, and ghostly white ladies as playable races. New abilities include historian and peace loving. It's interesting that this DLC ended up in the highest tier, as it feels the most gimmicky and difficult to play out of all of them. Gypsies get a bonus for abandoning land, which can work in the first few rounds, but they're really dead weight later on. It is a territory accumulation game after all. Final rank for the DLCs of Small World 2. Be Not Afraid, number one. Curse, number two. Grand Dames, number three. Carcassonne is the next game we're going to jump into. It is a tile placement game set in the French countryside. Place cities, roads, cloisters, and grasslands next to one another to create an interconnected landscape. Once land is placed, players can play their follower pieces called meeples. Meeples in cities will turn into knights. On the roads, they'll be a robber. Cloisters make monks, and grass creates farmers. You can tweak your playstyle to focus on gaining points for yourself or stymieing your opponent. I think that creates some nice dynamic gameplay. The game is a bit of a mess as a standalone, but it gets massively improved through the DLC. Even in top form, it still isn't as much fun as Small World 2, in my opinion. Carcassonne the River DLC adds 11 river cards that replace the starting tiles. It seems like a decent enough addition, and it makes the game quite a bit more strategic. 
Even if you're just working through the early game, the river cards need to line up, and that leads to even more distribution of the tile types. It feels like this should have been a part of the game even from the beginning, as it does tend to make the gameplay flow better, if you'll forgive the pun. Carcassonne Inns and Cathedrals. A bit more tactical play and competitiveness is added with each expansion. This adds 18 new cards in the form of Inns and Cathedrals, obviously. The Inns aren't your run-of-the-mill cards. Inns can increase the value of villages and cathedrals that you own, but if you don't play them before the road or town is finished, they become useless. Overall, another must-have DLC if you're going to play Carcassonne. The Princess and the Dragon expansion adds an element of luck via the dragon that I don't think makes sense for a game that relies on strategy. The dragon will rampage and eat all the player pieces that he comes across, thus ruining your chances for victory, or your opponent's chances for victory if you get lucky. The fairy piece can protect you or your opponent from the dragon, but you just have to hope that you choose who to protect correctly. This expansion also adds magical portals for easy movement, which is pretty nice. And finally, the princess piece serves to remove all rival meeples from a city. Simple, but decent enough. Carcassonne Winter and Gingerbread Man. Now this is a horse of a different color! No, seriously, it's basically just a reskin for the entire original game. The one difference are the gingerbread tiles. The Gingerbread Man token moves around to incomplete cities and gives a small point bonus for players that play on the Gingerbread Man. In my opinion, it is by far the worst expansion, as it's basically just a reskin of the somewhat broken base game. As I mentioned, the base game is a bit of a mess, and the Gingerbread Winter reskin really does nothing to remedy that fact. Carcassonne Traders and Builders control trade commodities, wine, cloth, and grain in order to win bonus points at the end of a match. That's the trader part. The builder part refers to a new unit that allows you to take two turns and speed up construction order. Honestly, the trader bonus is nice, but it isn't worth pursuing too hard. The builders are fairly decent, but they won't actually put you that far ahead considering that everyone will get them at some point. The final addition is the pig, which boosts points for the farmers on field tiles. Overall, a fairly decent expansion. So the rank of DLCs for Carcassonne, the rivers, is by far the top. Inns and Cathedrals after that, then we've got Traders and Builders, after that is Dragon and the Princess, and at the very bottom, we can probably throw it in the trash, it is Winter and Gingerbread Man. Patchwork, standalone game, no DLC, thank god. The graphics are the most striking part of this game to me. You can also change the themes, which is a very cool addition. The gameplay itself is simple enough. Purchase parts, such as buttons and cloth, to make a better quilt than the other quilters you're competing against. It's basically a territory accumulation game with a cloth twist. Overall, the game is pretty decent, but it's definitely clearly a mobile port that has been ported to the PC, which would be fine, except that sometimes it has issues detecting mouse clicks, which can make the controls finicky. Not bad, but not exactly great either. Kings and Assassins. This is my favorite pick of the bundle, beating out Small World 2 by a tiny margin. Two players compete to either protect or assassinate the king before swapping sides. The king pushes through the crowds towards safety behind the castle walls, using his guards to create a safe path. There are 12 mobs, and three of them are assassins, so you'll need to watch their movements carefully. The gameplay seems pretty shallow, but if you're playing against a smart opponent, things can get pretty intense. My favorite part is that it's all 1v1, which is great considering the number of friends that I have fits on just one hand. Love Letter. You ever wanted to woo the princess? Hell yeah you did. This is a game similar to Bullshit, where you try to deduce what your opponent is holding. It obviously loses a bit of depth because you can't actually see your opponents during online play, but it's still yet another deceptively simple game that takes the title for my fourth favorite in this bundle. The third favorite is coming up next. Online multiplayer is kind of weak, since the game has a start timer of 30 seconds. So if no third person joins your lobby within that 30 seconds, the game starts as a 1v1. And Love Letter isn't very fun as a 1v1 game. If you've got some buddies though, maybe all in a voice chat, ooh, this game could be a real treat. Potion Explosion. Interesting that they didn't include the DLC for this title, but the base game is serviceable enough. You get a list of potions and their ingredients along with their special effects. You can choose ingredients from the dispenser board and and everything in the row above it slides down. If matching elements touch, there's an explosion, but you still get the ingredients, so 
the explosions are a good thing, unless your storage tanks are full. You'll need to choose carefully what potion you want to craft, then use its power and move on to the next potion. It's quite a good game, in 1v1 or even solo, surprisingly well done and easily takes the slot for my third favorite game in this bundle. Splendor. Before I sing the praises of Splendor, I think it would behoove everyone here to mention that the UI is somewhat of a mess. But Splendor's a nice game, simple rules, plenty of strategy, and a relatively short playtime. If you're tired of spending six hours staring at a Monopoly board, Splendor might be worth a spin, over and done in less than an hour. Mine gems, transport gems, acquire artisans to cut those gems, attract nobles, earn prestige, nobles and prestige mean victory. The game is easy to learn and hard to master, and the short rounds are really what drives it home for me. I'm so busy taking care of kids, and making YouTube videos, and working, work, 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 that I just don't have the free time to play for hours at a stretch like I once did. Ah, to be young again. Splendor, The Cities. The Cities replaces nobles with, uh, cities, and whoever collects the most cities wins the game. It really doesn't have much of an effect on the actual gameplay, aside from some cities requiring more or less stipulations before you can call it yours. It adds some variation, which is nice, but I think it's far from a must-have expansion. Splendor the Trading Posts! This DLC features a unique mechanic in the Route to the Orient, which will allow you to collect a small bonus. This gives all players a secondary objective to struggle over, while simultaneously trying to snatch up all the cities or noble houses that they can. The Route to the Orient can add up to a huge bonus over time, so don't let any player hold on to it for too long. Splendor The Strongholds By far, the best DLC for Splendor. Strongholds are tokens that grant a strategic positioning. Each player will start with three, but they can also be destroyed to impede the progress of other players. This adds a completely new layer to the game and doesn't break anything while also offering significant improvement to the layers of strategy that you decide to implement. I'd say, of these three expansions, this one is the must-have, though Trading Post is pretty nice too. Final ranking, Stronghold's best, Trading Post next, The Cities, take it or leave it. Mysterium, a psychic clue game. A cooperative, clue-like mystery game that's all about hunting serial killers with the help of their ghosts. Overall, this game is easily fifth best slot for the bundle, which might seem low, but that's just because this bundle is packed with great stuff for anyone who can find enjoyment in a card or a board game. This one is a pretty obvious mobile port as well, but it does do a lot better with mouse recognition than the aforementioned patchwork. As with most of these games, the online multiplayer lobbies can be a little bit finicky. For Mysterium, there is no kick or start game option. The game just starts when it's full, which means your friends who want to join will need to race for a seat against a bunch of randos. During gameplay, it can also be hard to differentiate between player characters. The only way to actually know who is who is to click on their token and observe the background color. A strange choice. Mysterium Hidden Signs DLC. Six new suspects, six new locations, and six new objects adds a rather large chunk to the game for a rather small price tag. Additionally, the ghost gets 42 new vision cards in order to help them communicate with the detectives that much more effectively. It's more of the same, but considering how cool the base game is, there's nothing not to like here. Mysterium Secrets and Lies DLC. Another six suspects, locations, and objects, along with another 42 vision cards. Not a ton to say that I didn't say already. It's more of a good thing. Is there such a thing as too much of a good thing? I mean, surely, but this game hasn't yet managed to reach that threshold in only two expansions. I think it's cool that they included all of the DLC for Mysterium. Good play, Asmodee. Twilight Struggle, standalone strategy board game with a dash of history. Sounds pretty sweet, and actually does play fairly decently. Complexity is kept fairly low, but game knowledge will vastly improve your odds of winning. Isn't that always the case? Anyways, it does feature some luck-based dice rolling, which makes me less than excited, but you can overcome a couple of bad rolls with superior strategy. The online community is also relatively active and fairly non-toxic as well. You'll probably get waffle stomped quite a bit unless you brush up with some games against the AI. Even the AI in this game offers some nice challenge. Overall, a fairly strong entry, all things considered. Scythe Digital Edition. A very, very tasty 4x strategy about controlling a central point on a map called the Factory. Each of the five factions starts in a different area with different resources. You've got Crimea, Nordic, Saxon, 
Polania, and Rusviet. You can also assign abilities to each of those factions, such as Engineering, Industrial, Patriotic, Agricultural, and Mechanical. Each of the factions and abilities play slightly differently, and that adds a lot to keeping the game feeling fresh with each new map. The game itself is great, but the digital version doesn't feature an undo button, which means that once you've placed a unit, it's staying there, even if your turn isn't over. A few quality of life changes could make this game truly outstanding, but as it is, it's still pretty good. I've sung praises for most of these games, but we're going out on a down note with Lord of the Rings Adventure Card Game Definitive Edition. Let me make it perfectly clear. I love returning to Middle-earth in any form, but this particular iteration is riddled with bugs that can make it absolutely unplayable. If you can get a match completed without a crash, you'll experience some challenging and complex strategy, but unfortunately, development stopped on this game. I'd really like to see some of the bugs fixed and some more expansions added as DLC content, but as it stands, I remain frustrated with what this game could have been. Lord of the Rings Adventure Card Game? You were meant for greatness! How could you have failed in your quest? <laughs> Overall, I think this bundle is absolutely a steal, as Modi does a great job taking a physical board game and turning it into a digital version. They still need a little bit of help with, like, some quality of life stuff, as I mentioned with Scythe. And there is quite a few problems with their multiplayer lobbies, but overall, I think you'll be in for a good time if you pick up this bundle, especially if you enjoy board and card games. Me personally, I'll probably give it the old skipperoo, because I ain't too big on board and card games, and uh, if I want to play something card-related, I'll play Cards Against Humanity online with friends, but overall, this is, this is not too bad. Kings and Assassins, Small World 2, Potion Explosion, Love Letter... Really all of them. Scythe? Mysterium? Yeah, there's there's a ton of good stuff in here. The only kind of meh games are Patchwork and Lord of the Rings Adventure Card Game. So for 12 bucks, I'd say it's worth snapping the bundle up. You can save a lot of money, especially if you're one of those completionists that loves the DLC expansions. A lot of these games do feature all of the DLC or close to almost all of the DLC, which I think is really, really nice. So let me know what you guys decide to do with it. Check out the Twitter, the Discord, we've got a giveaway for Jurassic World Evolution going on there now. Shaza, The same one from the Humble Monthly, which I did cover. Check that video out if you want to. Also, a big, big thanks to my patrons. We've got Radimus Sisko, Damon Darkstar, and Nico the Legend. Three patrons, my god, we're, we're actually blowing up, maybe, a little bit. <laughs> but anyways, big shout out to you guys. I shall see you in the next one, friends. Thank you, as always, for watching. I hope that you'll like, comment, and or subscribe. This has been Bundle Banter on the Humble as Modi Digital Play with Friends Bundle. God, they really needed to work on those bundle names. <laughs> Anyways, I hope to see you in the next one. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. And until the next time, friends, bye! -bye!